All right, praise the Lord, everybody. Pastor Steve Sterling from the Dallas Revival Center here in the heartbeat of heaven, Dallas, Texas. And uh, it's a beautiful day here in the neighborhood, and, and it is an extraordinary Tuesday. And uh, we thank God that uh, we can uh, just enjoy the beautiful change in seasons for every good reason. Hallelujah. And I say in Jesus' name, we break all trees and from anything that is good from God and we break all separation and we call in unity and uh, holy bliss and kiss the sun amen and just put everything else in remission in Jesus name we call on God's permission to flow to go to know to show and to manifest in Jesus name and you know we just thank God because, um, you know, inside every person is the real person that God created, the real person, the real identity that God has created, regardless of what has been stolen, lost, what has been taken, what has been uh, subtracted from that. Uh, we just pray that it will all come back. According to Joel 2.22 to 32, uh, that was a canker worm, caterpillar, palm worm, and uh, uh locusts have eaten that will all come back all of it all of it all of it into our real wealth wellness wholeness uh substance our real uh divine order divine initiative and divine protocol that we were birthed and bequeathed with when we were born again that all of that from the old will become new all that from the antiquated and outdated will be erased and be released and will be uh, extracted and that will flow in behold all things are brand new hallelujah there it is behold all things are brand new praise God so I want to run across a few things with you today so God can have full sway and give you full pay amen for all the benefits that he has uh, stored up for you Amen, 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 amen. I think that's Psalm 68. If you start with verse 18, thou hast ascended on high and hast led captivity captive. There it is. All our captivity is led captive. Thank you, Jesus. And thou hast received gifts for men, yea, even for the rebellious also. And God's going to perforate, penetrate, and, uh, and just be prolific in getting into and through all these issues of rebellion, of... Uh, uh, drag and lag and anything that has been uh, uh, just uh, rejecting what God has been selecting for us all these years. We just pray in Jesus' name, God will put us in new gears, take away all of our fears, fill us full of cheers, hallelujah. In Jesus' name, thou hast ascended on high, thou hast led captivity captive, thou hast ascended on high, 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 high. That's what we need to stay in high levels ingredients of God's goodness and don't come down from that lofty position. Thou hast ascended on high, thou hast left captivity captive, thou hast received gifts for men. Yea, for the rebellious also that the Lord God might dwell among them. Look at that. That the Lord might all of this works so that God can dwell among us. See. Uh, verse 19. Blessed be the Lord, here it is, who daily loads us with benefits. Benefits. Even the God of our salvation. So it's a God of benefits. He's also a God of salvation. Verse 20, he is our God. It, he is the God of salvation. And unto God, the Lord belongs the issues from death. Out of the heart proceeds the issues of life. All the issues of life. So we just uh, escape from the issues of death. All those are nullified, neutralized, and negated according to, uh, well, you can go to uh, Galatians 3, 13 to 15. He reversed the curse, took us out of the hearse. And gave us the money purse. Hallelujah. Or you can go to uh, 2 Corinthians 5.21. It talks about uh, he became sin for us who knew no sin. That we might become the righteous of God in him. So we become his righteousness. Amen. He's reversed the curse. And also in. Uh, well there's a lot of those scriptures. 1 Corinthians 1.30. He's made unto us righteousness. And redemption. Amen. Sanctification, holiness, all of those things are ours in Jesus' name. But anyway, there you go. And so, 
And there you have it. So, but in Philippians 4.17, it talks about the born again experience of, of people uh, not only are born again, their nature's changed, but since their nature's changed, they've come back into the family, uh, you know, and they, they're inheritors now. They're joint heirs with Jesus Christ, the heirs of God. Uh, and so, uh, account has been fully opened for them in, in, in Philippians 4.17, not because I desire a gift, Paul says. But I desire fruit that may abound to your account. There it is. Not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. There it is. Uh, but I have all and abound, and I am full, having received of Aphrodite the things which were sent from you. Now look what it says here. An odor of sweet smell. An odor of a sweet smell, sacrifice acceptable, well pleasing to God. We don't sacrifice animals today, bullocks and goats and those types of these sheep, but uh, we sacrifice our finance, our resources. See, and, and, and to God, it's just the same as uh, in the Old Testament, them giving up their livestock. An odor of sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable and well pleasing to God. A sacrifice, see, acceptable, well pleasing to God. So there it is. Uh, money is called an offering or a sacrifice in Philippians between Philippians 4 17 to 19 and again it, it let me emphasize Paul says not because I desire a gift but I desire that fruit may abound to your account see it's not it's more blessed to give than it is to receive so he's desiring fruit to accrue or money to accrue, or resources to accrue in your account. And we all have a personalized account in Jesus Christ. You know, it's just amazing, you know, because Romans 8, 17, like we start with Romans 8, 16, the Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. And if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Jesus Christ. So we've been adopted into the family. Uh... We've been adopted into the family. You know, and it says that in, um, <clears throat> uh, let's see. It says that in Ephesians 1, 5, it says God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family. I didn't say it. See, it says it right there in the New Living Translation. God decided in advance to adopt us into his family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. Bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ is the bringer forth. Jesus Christ is the agent by which we've been adopted. He is the vehicle by which we've been adopted. This is what he wanted to do and gave, and it gave him great, this is what he wanted to do and gave him great pleasure. And so, uh, you know, it is his pleasure to give, give us what the kingdom, the Bible says. And so, um you know, we're heirs and heirs of God, co-heirs. And so accounts have been set up in our name as heirs. You know, any rich family that has children are going to have uh, trust funds. So it's the same way with God, only on a lot, much larger, larger scale. Uh, believe you me. Thank you, Jesus. And, you know, Galatians... <clears throat> Three twenty nine says, "If you if you if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed, heirs, according to the promise. Everything that God spoke to Abraham, He might as well have spoken it to you, because you're His seed uh, from the major seed, which is Jesus Christ." Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I mean, it's so exciting, isn't it? Hallelujah. You know, uh, Titus 3, 7, so that being justified by his grace, we will become heirs with the hope of eternal life. And there it is. I mean, eternal life is ours, John 10, 10. The thief comes to still kill and destroy, but he said, uh, I have come that you might have a life and have it to the full till it overflows in abundance. And you know, the scripture is just full of superlatives when it talks about uh, sons, the sons of God. You know, in Proverbs uh, which is the book of Solomon. Uh, he should know something about wealth, shouldn't he? Proverbs thirteen twenty one: Evil pursues sinners, but to the righteous good shall be repaid. Look at that. But to the righteous good shall be repaid.
paid, will be repaid for all the indemnity, loss, liability, uh, limitation, hesitation, reservations, anything that has been held back, kept back, and put back away from us since uh, we came out of the fall. And, and, and uh, Jesus has intercepted us and uh, cut us into the family of God. And all of that in the past, up to the time that he claimed us as born-again believers and sons, uh, and from the time we were born again to the time that we really got in the real uh, lifeline and the, and the feeder system of God himself uh, and really understood what was really going on and how, how things uh, operate and how things consist and how things uh, are animating. Uh, all the loss is being repaid to us. Just get a hold of that. All the loss is being repaid to us. You know, verse 22, a good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children and the wealth of the sinners laid up for the just. So there it is. And any of those agents that uh, were agents to uh, steal, kill, and destroy or to remove from us the riches that God uh, had ordained for us before the foundation of the wor world is being reinstituted and uh, being recovered for us. It's the lineage of David. And uh, 1 Samuel 30 verse 8, And David inquired of the Lord, Shall I pursue this raiding party, or will I overtake them? And God says, Pursue them. You certainly will overtake them, succeed in the rescue. And, of course, in the King James Version, David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered unto them, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them without fail and recover all. That's our scripture. That's what Jesus Christ has done and is doing for us now. Hallelujah. You know, in, in 1 Samuel 30, verse 18, so David re recovered everything the Amalekites had taken, including his two wives. Hallelujah. And so it just goes on and on about David, and God spoke to David. He just kept recovering and recouping and, and, and reclaiming and getting back everything that was lost or stolen from the enemy, the nemesis enemy. Hallelujah. Uh, so it's just, just so beautiful, isn't it? Amen. It just stands to reason. And, you know, uh, when you're justified, and God has really uh, well established you legally uh, in his presence through his son, you know, you can take that scripture and you can actually uh, walk in it in Romans 5, 1, just by claiming it. Uh, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, see, it's all by faith. Since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace where which we stand. We rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Look at there it is. So what's happening? God's taking us to the glory. But he starts with justification. Just as if we've never sinned. You know, it, through Jesus Christ, he evaporates and just wipes out. He, he nullifies, neutralizes, negates, and demolishes all sin of the past. And then uh, imparts his faith to us. Oh, that is so powerful. And we can walk in that faith, operate of that faith, operate of the faith of the Son of God. To earmark that, just go to Galatians 2.20. And I'll read it out of the King James Version again. I just quote, kind of quoted it. But I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who lives, but Christ lives in me. The life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So that faith is operating on a prim on the principles of love and him giving himself for us every moment, every second, every hour, every day, uh, every week, every month, and every year. Praise God. Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So that's what God does for us. It makes us conquerors in all things and moves us forward, it unites us with himself, and uh, even imparts the faith of the Son of God so that we can walk in that miraculous realm. Thank you, Jesus. It's so wonderful. It's just so amazing. It's just so phenomenal. Yeah. Another another quick uh, word and truth. You know, 
the, the word reconcile, you know, justifies one and reconciles even another First Corinthians one twenty and through him to reconcile himself all things, reconcile himself all things, reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. So the blood of his cross is basically reconciled all things. In other words, it's 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 become remedial. That is intervening, interposed. God has intervened and interposed himself to bring all things that were broken, tarnished, varnished, things that were shredded and things that have been uh, misallocated and misappropriated, things, just fundamentally things that uh, lay broken, torn, worn, and shorn. He, he has uh, reconciled all those things, whether things on earth or things in heaven. Isn't that wonderful? Things in earth or things in heaven. My God, that's amazing, isn't it? He's just putting it all back together the way it was supposed to be in the first place by making peace through the blood of his cross. There it is. Making peace through the blood of his cross. See, Adam uh, was a recipient of all the wealth of the whole world. But through his disobedience, he gave it over to Satan. But Jesus, through his obedience, took it back, all the wealth of the world, took it all back and put it in his possession. And now, as sons and daughters, we are joint heirs with him. I mean, if that doesn't float your boat, if that doesn't get you excited, nothing will. And, and what's happening now is there's a wealth transfer on, and that wealth transfer uh, is amazing in Jesus Christ. It's about the end time harvest. It's not so much about us, but about the wealth uh, of the uh, wealth transfer to empower people to uh, participate and to reach the, uh, with the gospel around the world and uh, glean the end time harvest. God is taking from the world, giving it to you for the end time harvest. God's taking the wealth from the world or from the wicked or from the unrighteous and giving it to you, putting it into your hands. God, God, that's just, if that, if that doesn't blow your mind, the wealth of the unrighteous is laid up for the righteous. Hallelujah. And the wealth transfer moves from the world to the word, from the world to to the world, to the word, the world, to the word. So if you're not word-based and not word-oriented, forget about the wealth transfer. It's not going to happen for you. You've got to stay in the word, with the word, walk through everything uh, in that commanding votive voice of God's covenant power. Hallelujah. To see the transference, to see the wealth transference. Hallelujah. You can see the wealth of the wicked <coughs> was originally the wealth of the children of God. The wealth of the wicked was originally the wealth of the children of God. Hallelujah. And uh, I think I'm going to close it here. It says in uh, Psalm 24, one. Says, uh, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. Earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. See, the wicked have... Okay, I think I'm just going to end this uh, part of the wealth transfer. One, uh, close it down for a moment, and uh, we'll come back with part two in a little while. But uh, if you want to get rolling right now and really begin to see God begin to do something, uh, uh, put a seed in the ground. And, uh, you know, uh, just today I had a phenomenal experience where... Yesterday morning, I sowed a five hundred dollars seed to uh, a, a larger ministry that I've been sowing to for quite some time now. And the Lord, instead of sowing a thousand, the Lord said sow five hundred. So I did that. And uh, this morning, when I got up, um, I went to pick up my MKT from the Lincoln uh, Service Center in Plano, Texas. And when, on the way up there, I was told that uh, my endurance coverage did not cover all of the uh, repairs and that 
and that was the first time I ever used endurance, and uh, there was a, uh, a discrepancy of because uh, they charge one hundred and seventy-five dollars an hour for repairs uh, at that facility, and uh, endurance was only paying one hundred and twenty-five. So that left me with a difference of uh, the number of hours they had to put into repairing the car. Uh, eight hundred dollar bill. He charged me eight hundred dollars, and I thought I was only going to have to put a deductible of a hundred dollars down. So you could imagine the surprise. But it was not a surprise because I was surprised yesterday that I I felt led to sow a five hundred dollar seed, and I got up in the morning and you know got we got the checkbook out, called the routing numbers and account numbers into the ministry that I sowed it to, and and sowed that cash. So like in a flash, within ten minutes. After I objected to the uh, $800 bill sir, up in the service center, the man chopped $600 off the bill. And I was only uh, having to pay a, a $200, one for the $100 for the part and $100 for the deductible. So, you know, I saved over $600 just in that one thing. And there were other things related to that that I saved money and probably equal to about $1,000. So I want to say this, that it works. The wealth transfer works, my friends. I put it into practice yesterday, all, and it, 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 it just worked as early as today. Today, I collected a wealth transfer. So uh, reimbursement, deductions, uh, cancel, debt cancellation, uh, you name it, uh, God works it in so many different defining ways. Uh, we're going to get back and talk to you more about this, but you need to sow a seed right down the middle of your knee. Do it, and then watch God work it. I'm not telling you something that I haven't. I don't even have any knowledge of. I'm telling you something that I know that works, and works well. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I thought I sowed a thousand dollar seed uh, to the Lord, asking for Him to help me get a second automobile, and within a week. He led me to a car that had uh, uh, only 6,000 miles on it, brand new, 2020. Uh, and God did that as I just strolled over to the first car lot that I went to. I mean, that's how God works these things. Hallelujah. And so now we're going to pay on that. We're going to pay 5,000 as our first payment. And it's gonna knock it, we, we knocked over a third of the, of the price of the car out. So what I'm trying to say is you don't have to wait around and just go into a dreariness of a 52-month note, a 72-month note, on and on, you know, and, and having a house and just having a mortgage for the next 20 to 30, 40 years. God can lop down with this wealth transfer and start giving you, I mean, increases and, in, you know, getting you debt-free so quick to make your head spin. So what you need to do is just sow a seed right now into the middle of your need and watch God give you the title deed and watch you succeed. Uh, just go ahead and sow it to Dallas Revival Center. To go on, online to Dallas Revival Center, click on the uh, PayPal Me hyperlink and sow there. You don't even have to be a member of PayPal to sow there. Or you can go to uh, the application on your smartphone, Zelle, Z-E-L-L-E, and... Uh, Download it if you are, don't have it already, and uh, from the Play Store, and then go ahead and uh, put in four six nine three three five three three five six four six nine three three five three three five six, and get your digital transfer happening now. And uh, I mean, when I when I when I saw that five hundred dollars seed yesterday, uh, and and the woman prayed over me, I felt the fire of God come on me. I mean, fire came on me. And then I went to service. We had a, a, not a very large attendance on Sunday, but Monday night, I mean, in that morning, we sowed that seed. And Monday night, it blew the top of the roof off. And that place was so full, and fire was in that house. I mean, people were getting blessed. You don't realize what a seed can do. I'm sorry. The seed can unlock doors of destiny for you. But you've got to put something into play, or you're just playing around with what could be profound and renowned in your life. So what I want you to do is to get to the get to the uh, seating, and, and, and uh, if you want to call direct 469-335-3356, and so just so right to the ministry, you can do that as well. Um, or uh, do it by a check to, or money order to Dallas Revival Center, uh, in care of Dallas Revival Center, P.O. Box 271636, Dallas, Texas 75227. Just like heaven, 
breaking all the leaven. And uh, do it that way and make your checks and money orders payable to UAWOMI. UAWOMI. Well, God bless Steve Sterling. It's 28.50 on this broadcast. God bless you. 28 minutes and 50 seconds. Bye bye for now. <laughs>